Um, I didn't hear it say recording in progress, but hopefully that's okay. Just want to make sure that's going live. Now I see people are okay. Oh, my sound is off. Turn volume up. <laughs> All these little things. Volume up. All these little things. All right, that is there. Um, okay, meeting is being live stream. Now. I know that just give me one second because for some reason I know that people have joined the meeting but they're not in. Um, hmm. <laughs> Sorry, everyone, just give me a second. Okay, I just sent a little message to see what was happening there. <laughs> um, all right, I hope it's okay on my end or on your end. Um, seems to be okay on my end. I know I'm live in the group, so that is all right there. Um, okay, so welcome everybody to this uh, masterclass uh, information session. Um, I wanted to share this document that I came across uh, called the menopause rating um, system or rating scale. And um, I was uh, in a webinar and I, I joined lots of webinars just for about menopause, women over 40, you know, what's happening with their hormones. Um, this webinar was in particularly about um, a new uh, a new um, supplement that came out that was actually extracted from rhubarb and it had um, significant impact on helping women with menopause. But then they anyway in the presentation they had used um, this document called the the menopause rating system and I thought well I don't like I don't know if too many people know about this so I wanted to um, I wanted to share um that uh i wanted to share that th this system so let me bring up my um of course i <laughs> my uh yeah presentation here i'm gonna say of course i was had it at the end but that's okay i just scaled it back i just want to make sure that this is going all right on here or on your i just want to make sure that yep okay looks good if you are on Facebook and you want to ask any questions, um, go ahead. I have the, the screen open. I'll answer some questions at the end if you like. But um, today is talking about decoding the menopause rating system. And then I'm also going to give you three simple health, holistic health steps um, or strategies to help you with your menopause symptoms if you're going through any and what I have found to be the most significant uh, for helping my clients. Um, I work with women who are over 40. Our main concern is usually, you know, belly fat. Everybody's starting to gain this weight around their belly where maybe that has never happened before. And so that is what we focus on. But we also focus on a lot of um, these symptoms that are coming up because of our declining hormones. And, you know, I really want to help you feel better and feel your best. And so that's what I help women do. I have a program, a couple of programs that I run. 
Um, I'll talk about those a little bit later. But today we're going to talk about this system. So this uh, this system was actually created um, by it was a questionnaire used to assess and measure the severity of menopausal symptoms in women. It was developed by the World Health Organization. So a very um, a, a very like uh, important document so this is my perimenopause brain where I don't I, I can't find the words so if I if I stumble a little bit it's I, it's my brain I can't find the words um but it's a it's a document that is um a well-resourced document that that you can use to take to your health practitioner or your doctor and it was created by the world, world health organization so I think that holds a lot of merit uh, for you when you're filling this out so it consists of some various um symptom domains some symptoms, common symptoms that we experience in, um, in menopause. So it's broken up into three main um, sections. One of them are, one of them is somatic symptoms. So this is things like hot flashes. That's very common. Sweating, uh, sleep problems, joint and muscle discomfort, um, and physical symptoms related to menopause. So that's one section there's another section that is um like psychological symptoms so things like mood swings irritability anxiety depressive mood and other psychological or emotional changes associated with menopause and then um urogenital symptoms so things looking at your um your urinary tract system um also looking at vaginal dryness sexual problems um urinary symptoms um, and changes in sexual interest. So um, this is, it's quite fantastic because a lot of times we just think of menopause as like hot flashes and night sweats. And we don't realize all of these other things are actually contributing to, um, can contribute to menopause and can contribute to how we feel. So I find this really a breath of fresh air that we're getting this recognition that menopause is just not, okay, period done and you get some hot flashes and that's it. That it does include all of these things. And maybe you are surprised to know that um, that it includes everything here as well. I'm just going to check um, before I move on to the next slide um, to see if um, my person got in. I don't see her popping up, so I'm not sure what happened. But I'll send her the recording afterwards. Anyway, so um, these are definitely symptoms that we we will go through. Um, as, as women, I'm not going to go through all of them, we could go through some, you know, uh, some here, some there, everybody's very, uh, very unique, but um, we can definitely go through some of these, some of these symptoms. So, um, yeah, so the question was, did you know that some of these symptoms are related to to menopause, and I want you to know that you're, you're going to feel your body possibly change when you're over 40. And sometimes we get very worried about what these changes are and what it means. And the more knowledge you have about what's going on in your body will help reduce that stress and anxiety and then give you the tools and give you the, the conversation that you can have with your health practitioner to make some changes to get some, get some help. So the, um, the rating system is, um, it's just a one document, it's 11 questions. <laughs> so 11 questions. Um, and then you rate your symptoms on a scale of zero to four. So zero being none, one mild, two moderate, three severe, and four extremely severe. Um, I have a PDF of the menopause rating scale. So if you want it, send me a message and I can message you the PDF. Because if this is a conversation that you need to have with your doctor or with your health practitioner, this is a good piece of paper that you can fill out and say, okay, here's where I am on this scale. What can we do to improve um, my symptoms or improve my quality of life? So um, if you want some of that, then just, um, just send me a message. So this is, yeah, so this is the scale. So the first, there's only 11 questions. It's very short and sweet. But again, as I said, I think that this is a step in the right direction for women over 40 so that we're getting more recognition as to what our bodies are going through, what we're dealing with when we're when we're over 40. So the first uh, the first question, um, we have these somatic symptoms. So number one, are you doing, dealing with hot flashes, sweating or episodes of sweating? And so you would rate that on a scale of zero to four. Again, hot flashes are very common for women. 
Um, night sweats are actually are very common for women too. Not to say you're going to have them, but you could. And you may notice, I know this has been a new symptom for me that I've noticed. I've just been sweating more when I work out. So I used to not be a sweater and now I am, now I am a sweater. I'm like, oh, I'm sweating. But I'm like, but I'm like, oh, this is good. I got detox pathways are working well. I'm detoxing. Um, the next question is heart discomfort. So are you feeling an unusual awareness of your heartbeat? So sometimes, you know, like people, women will say like heart palpitations, um, heart skipping, heart racing. Do you feel tightness in your heart? So that is a symptom of menopause. So it's something you can rate on a scale of zero to four. Now, these are not broken up individually. You just have to, if it's just, you know, I've noticed that my heart is skipping a beat, then you have to rate that. But again, that's the conversation you have with your health practitioner. Number three, are you experiencing sleep problems? And um, majority of the women that I work with are experiencing some sleep problems. It usually starts with getting up in the night to go pee once. And then sometimes it's twice, sometimes it's three times. And then if you've got that monkey brain, you get up to go pee and you're not getting back to sleep. So sleep problems, difficulty falling asleep can be an issue. Um, difficulty sleeping through the night or waking up really early. Sometimes we get these uh, waking up at like three or four in the morning and you can't get back to sleep. And then the last somatic symptom is joint and muscular dis discomfort, right? A lot of times we think, oh, this is old age and this is like an old injury that's coming up, but it is related to our drop in hormones. So are you getting pain in your, in your joints? And that is something to rate on a scale of zero to four. So those are four questions somatic. And then the psychological symptoms um, that we can experience. So a depressive mood. And I say this is like feeling flat, sort of feeling very, very flat, um, feeling down, feeling sad, on the verge of tears, lack of drive, lack of motivation, mood swings. So those can be, again, rated on a scale of zero to four. And that conversation to have with your doctor, what are you experience, be, experiencing? Because mood swings can be a little bit different than feeling, feeling down. Uh, irritability. So feeling nervous, inner tension, feeling aggressive on the scale of zero to four. Anxiety, so this is another one that um, is quite common with the women I work with, just an increase in, in anxiety. So inner restlessness, feeling panicky and on a scale of zero to four. And then physical and mental exhaustion. So you're finding that there's a general decrease in your performance, impaired memory, brain fog. That is uh, a, another big one that my um, clients experience. Um, decrease in concentration and forgetfulness. So again, it's it is general, and you and you can you know see mark how you're feeling, and always go back to you know pre um kind of pre menopause or pre perimenopause in your 30s is there a change like if you were always a person who experienced anxiety um then it's it's not a new symptom it's not something that you want to mark you know mark as a new symptoms but if it's gotten worse if it's gotten worse that's definitely something you want to talk to your doctor about because that um that can happen as we get that decrease in estrogen and progesterone and then the, the last section is this urogenital symptoms. So bladder problems, very common um, with women. So bladder incontinence, we see start to happen as those muscles start to atrophy. You know, everything holding up at the bottom is, is muscle. So if we are not working it out, then it's going to get flat. We're not going to be able to hold, um, hold in as well. Um, it's the same with any muscle, right? Bicep muscle. If you're not working your bicep, it's going to get flat and, and, and flabby and not be able to do the job and be, have that strength. So it's something that we start to see. Um, difficulty in urinating um, and the increased need to urinate. So again, that getting up in the night once to go pee and then maybe it's twice and then maybe it's three times, and maybe it's four times. It does happen. So this is a change in symptoms due to loss of, um, of hormones. And then we also see dryness. So dryness in the vagina um, and sometimes intercourse can be painful as well. And this is also a sign of um, um, those loss in, in, uh, in hormones. 
So again, this is why I like this scale. It is a, uh, you know, a piece of paper that is written by the World Health Organization that recognizes these are the symptoms of menopause. And it is something that you can take into your practitioner and it has that um, validity that um, from, you know, a recognized organization, which is what I, which I, what I like. So um, when we're kind of rating this on a scale, like how did you do, you know, sometimes you do those, uh, those tests and you're like, okay, if you scored, um, you know, 40, be, between 40 and 44, then that means that you've got really bad, you know, menopause symptoms. <laughs> If you scored between 30 and 40, then you're kind of in the middle. We can't really use the scale like that and address our symptoms like that. Because if you are having hot flash symptoms and the hot flashes are so severe that you have to leave meetings um, because you get this hot flash coming over you, if you have to work from home because you never know when you're going to have a hot flash, if you have to take two or three changes of clothes with you to wherever you're going, just in case you get a hot flash, that is enough to merit some discussion. And it doesn't matter if you're not getting any of the other symptoms, if that is impaired, and if that is um, creating a disturbance in your quality of life, then that is something you need to talk about. So it's not I don't think that it should be addressed as a total score at all. I think individual scores need to be looked at and those need to be addressed so that you can um, um, improve your, your quality of life. So, so that is the point of doing this is just to, just to look and these are the main symptoms and this is what I have. Um, now there are some things missing from this, uh, from this uh, sheet, which I include in my hormone assessment that I do. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about those, but I wanted to, you know, look at some of these things individually. So if, you know, some of these somatic symptoms, if you're, you know, having hot flash sweating episodes, episodes of sweating, um, you know, one uh, form of, um, not, I don't want to say treatment, but a recommendation to help with reducing those is to try to increase the available estrogen that you have. Um, and so that would be something that, that you could work on. If you're experiencing some heart discomfort, then maybe we need to look at reducing your stress hormones. Um, if you have sleep problems and if you're getting up in the night to go pee, then we need to look at balancing blood sugar. And if you're experiencing some joint muscular discomfort, then we look at, you know, supplementation and also balancing blood sugar. So again, saying that you can't just say, this is my score. So this is the, um, this is how I'm going to treat it because each one of these is treated very differently by a holistic health practitioner and also by your doctor, it's gonna be treated very differently. So that's why it's important to, to kind of break them down. Um, the, the psychological symptoms, we need to look at nutrition, we need to look at balancing blood sugar, food sensitivities, you know, there's some food sensitivities that are causing more of an issue. You look at supplementation to help, exercise. We know exercise is going to give us these awesome endorphins that are going to make us feel good and it's going to help balance our mood. Um, and then also some stress management practices along with exercise to help balance mood. And then if you're experiencing some general general problems, you know, um, maybe it's time to visit a pelvic floor physiotherapist uh, for some treatment and see if they can help help you to know what muscles to strengthen to have um, a healthier pelvic floor. Uh, also, we need to start looking at drinking more water to keep hydrated so we can keep lubricated and also to add lots of healthy fats to your diet as well. So you can keep, um, keep some moisture happening. So these are symptoms that are going to, that are going to happen with menopause, but holistically we can do some things to help um, reduce the symptoms that you, that you have. And, um, this is also something that I talk about in, in my uh, group program and in, in my individual programs is self-care, self-care. So if you have not been putting work towards yourself yet, and you are 40 and older, then you need to start putting some work towards yourself. Regular exercise, looking at your nutrition, stress management becomes more important now than ever before to put the self-care in, even, even making the appointments to go see the, you know, physiotherapist for pelvic floor. That in itself is even important to, um, to do. And that is part of your self-care. 
Um, here are some other symptoms. Now, some of them I didn't make the list. Um, and uh, weight gain is a big one. Weight gain is a big one. Even though it wasn't on the list, as our hormones start to drop, we start to see more fat gain around the belly. And even if you were somebody who used to gain weight in your hips and thighs, and now it's gaining on your belly, that is, that is part of a, a menopause symptom. Um, and that's something that, um, you know, can be addressed as well. Your, your health practitioner may not see it as a menopause symptom, but when you work with women who are in menopause or, or perimenopause or postmenopause, you definitely see this as a trend. Um, another one, hair loss or thinning of hair. So that is a big symptom that comes up. Sometimes we see hair loss in the eyebrows and even like thinning in the, of the hair. Um, and then also a regular period. So, you know, it is a menopause rating system. And I should say that the, the definition of menopause is the one day after you've gone a year without having a period. That's menopause. And then after that day, it's postmenopause. And then the eight to 10 years before that day is perimenopause. So um, it's interesting that they didn't, they didn't bring up anything about irregular periods because that's what most women are going to experience first are irregular periods. And so sometimes we don't tie in um, menopause until menopause has been done and over with. But really these eight to 10 years leading up to menopause is when we can see all of these symptoms and when it can really impact our life. And even when I talk to women who are post-menopause and they, they say, you know, I, I look back at my life in my forties and I, uh, like my whole world was turned upside down. I didn't even know what was going on. And now I know it was perimenopause, but nobody told me. So anyway, I'm telling you now, <laughs> if you're experiencing all the feels, all the changes, it's perimenopause. Um, so irregular periods is what we see. Uh, some other things that can come up, uh, bloating and digestive issues. So I, we see that uh, as well with women um, getting into perimenopause, menopause, different changes in digestion. Um, itchiness is another one. It's a mild symptom, but still like either like skin itchiness can be an issue. Um, brittle nails is another one that I that I see quite often. Uh, dizziness, nausea, tingling, numbness, or pins and needles feeling in your hands and feet. Um, headaches, or maybe you used to be someone who gets headaches and now it's switched to migraines. So we see that as well uh, with women. And then yes, these changes in our changes in your menstrual period. Usually it gets heavier first. And then it gets a little bit lighter. Um, and then um, allergies is another one that we see that, uh, that comes up. But again, it can be very unique. You are your own person. Your, um, your body is made up of its own chemistry. And so you may be experiencing some symptoms that other people aren't. Um, and it doesn't mean that they're not valid. They are very much valid. And if it's, you know, if it's contributing to your quality of life, um, and it needs to be addressed and that, then it definitely should be, should be addressed. So these are some other things that you could be experiencing, but not on that sheet. But again, if you're going to a health practitioner, you can say, okay, this is where I am. Plus I have digestive issues and my allergies are getting worse. It's just, you know, more information for a practitioner to have, to help you and, and get you in the right, the right direction. Okay. So those, that's that. Does anybody have any questions about that? If anybody wants a um, wants the the scale, the PDF, send me a message just um, in the Facebook group, and I will I'll send it to you if you want to use it. But I wanted to end it with uh, three tips that you can use to help with your symptoms, and these are tips that I've used for myself. Um, new habits that have been put into place. And then also these are the uh, tips that I give my clients that are what that I work with. Um, the first step is balancing your blood sugar. And sometimes when we think about balancing our blood sugar, that means that we need to eat all day to make sure our blood sugar is balanced. <laughs> and that is the opposite of what, what I want you to do. Um, every time that we eat food, we send a signal to our body to produce insulin, and then when we produce insulin, um, it signals our body to store fat. 
And so I want you to turn that off. I don't want you to be storing fat all the time. And so by balancing blood sugar, what I mean is only having three meals a day. So we're having breakfast, lunch, dinner, no snacks, just water in between. You're fasting after dinner all night long for 12 hours. It's not a crazy fast, not like a 24 hour fast, it's a 12 hour fast. Fasting and then in between your meals, you're having four or five hours in between your meals. But this means in order for you to get all of the nutrition you need for your body, we need to have big meals. That's gonna include protein, number one. It's gonna include a serving or two of vegetables. It's gonna include a piece of fruit or a serving of fruit. You're gonna have some healthy fats on there like avocado or ghee or organic butter or olive oil or avocado oil or coconut oil. And then you can also have a grain with it. So we have these large meals and a lot of women say, oh, I'm so full. Yes, you are full, but this meal has to provide you with the amount of calories that your body needs to sustain itself. It also needs to provide you with all the vitamins and minerals that your body needs, especially when you are in perimenopause or menopause or postmenopause. And we need to make sure that you're eating this food, your body is going to produce insulin to help manage the blood sugar from this food. It's going to do its job and then it's going to stop and then it's going to stop. And then if we need energy, our body is going to take some energy from our fat that is on our body. Everybody has fat. Even my tiny little son who has like probably 5% body fat, he still has fat. So it's, your body's going to take fat and use it as energy. And so you're going to be this like carb burner and a fat burner. You're going to get the best of both worlds. So you're going to burn your carbs from your meal. And then you're going to go in and you're burning your fat. And then you're going to eat your next meal at lunch. And you're going to continue that cycle. So we have these periods of fasting throughout the day, periods of this intermittent fasting throughout the day. But we are not skipping on calories. We are not skipping on nutrition. And that is um, yeah, one way that the best way that we can balance our blood sugar. So try it out. See how it goes. The first couple of days are very difficult to do. But once you get in the habit of having those three meals a day, you will be fine. And you're going to go through phases. So, you know, you're going to feel full. You're going to eat your food. You're going to feel full. And then about the two hour mark when you would normally grab a snack because your stomach's going to feel empty. You're not hungry, your stomach's empty. So know the difference between hunger and stomach emptiness. It's okay for your stomach to be empty. If you start getting hunger pains, then you may need a little bit more food with your, with your meal. So you, you'll have to balance that out for yourself. Okay, so balance your blood sugar. Um, and then number two is move your body daily. And um, this is going to help. Like I said, exercise is going to help with um, it's going to release endorphins. It's going to help with your mood. So if you're, if you're dealing with, um, any irritability, mood swings, that sort of thing, exercise is going to help with your mood. Exercise is not a tool for weight loss. When you're over 40, exercise is not a tool for weight loss. Exercise is a tool for you to be at your best health, but it's not going to, it's not a tool for weight loss. Um, so exercise is also going to help your joints. So if you're finding that your joints are getting a little bit stiffer, a little bit more painful daily movements, you have to move your body daily. Uh, walking is number one, which I always suggest because it is a low stress exercise. Everybody can do it. Even if it's just for two or three minutes at a time, everybody can do it. It is a weight bearing exercise. If you're doing it outside, you're going to get that beautiful, um, calming effect from nature so walking number one strength training because our muscles are starting to atrophy and we need the strength to hold our body up so strength training number two add in some yoga and or pilates to get the mobility everything we do seems to be in this like forward plane it's very rarely that we're adding like a twist to do any kind of movement and then if we go to twist to do a movement, we throw our back out because our body's not used to it. So adding all kinds of activities that is going to allow you to move in all sorts of planes, move your joints in all sorts of planes is going to be very beneficial for you. And whatever's fun, whatever you like doing, you play baseball, play baseball, pickleball, do that. Badminton, volleyball, whatever it is, find your activity and do it and continue doing it and, and have fun doing it. Because exercise is not a tool for weight loss. It is a tool for health and longevity. 
And then the last, um, the last thing is uh, manage your stress. And we is on the next slide, but we don't have um, progesterone is very beneficial beneficial for us in our 20s and 30s in our teens to help us uh, bring our stress hormones down. And so when progesterone starts to decline, which is usually the first hormone that declines for women, when that starts to decline, we start to feel our stress hormones increase. Um, things that we used to be able to handle, we can't handle anymore. It feels like our cup is overflowing and we just can't take any more. And that is because we don't have this protection from progesterone to help level our stress hormones. So if you don't have any stress management practices now, I suggest you, you find something that's going to work for you. Daily prayer, walking, right? Walking is a tool, not for weight loss. We're not power walking for weight loss. We're walking for stress management, meditation, um, talking with friends, talking with family, pets, whatever it is, but finding what's going to work for you. And these things need to be done daily, right? We need to work on balancing our blood sugar daily. We need to move our body daily. We need to manage our stress daily. And I know um, I said that they're simple tips. I know they are simple. I can say them very simply and I can say that it's easy to do, but it's um, it's actually, it's it's hard to implement and it can be overwhelming. Um, but just stick with one. What it, what, you know, start with, not stick with one, start with one. What is the easiest thing to do? And even sometimes we think, oh, I can do a five minute walk a day. That's easy. That's easy, <laughs> right? Everybody's got five minutes. But when you try to implement that, it's very difficult because life happens. But again, now is the time for you to make yourself a priority because you need to put the self-care in because your hormones are not there to do it for you anymore. So um, usually progesterone, as I said, is the first to decrease. So it's going to lead to heavy periods. Uh, you're going to see your PMS start to increase if you're still getting a period. And you're going to find that you're going to have this increased stress and increased anxiety, even though everything has kind of stayed the same. You just, I always just say, it's like you've got a bowl or a cup and all, everything goes in at work, family, um, finances, relationships, everything goes in it. And then, and then all of a sudden the cup becomes overflowed and you just can't take anymore. Um, and so we need to start developing these practices too, to help with that. And so progesterone is on the way down and our body is not going to produce uh, much of it anymore. So we need to do the work to help um, what progesterone used to do. And then estrogen, um, when it starts to reduce, that's when we start to see these hot flashes and night sweats. Uh, weight gain is, a, is another uh, big sign. You know, you're doing all of the same things. You're going to the gym you're eating the same things and you're starting and you're either gaining weight or not losing weight. Brain fog and joint problems is um, what else that we, we see as estrogen starts to decline. And it's important to note these, these hormones don't come back, right? This is the end. This is menopause. This is the end. They don't come back. So we can't wait, sit and wait for them to come back. So we feel better. Um, we need to find what these practices are that are going to help us uh, manage our symptoms from here on out. So that is it for today. Um, well, I'm going to talk about my program that's starting the end of July. But if you if you joined on, I see we've got some people watching on Facebook, Kelly, Sherry, Tish, Glenda. So thank you very much for joining online. Um, if you uh, want to leave now, you can. I just was going to introduce my uh, group program that's going to be starting the end of July. Um, so again, thank you so much for your time and for joining me on your lunch hour to watch this little bit, but I, I hope that you gained something from it. And again, if you want the PDF of that, just send me a message and I will, I will send it to you. So for those of you that want to stay on and learn about my group program, um, so it's the, it's the six week slim down program for women 40 plus that is the short form of the name. The, the long form of the name is the six week slim down for women 40 plus who are dealing with inflammation and also with symptoms from perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause. So we kind of deal with everything. Um, it starts Monday, July 31st. And what's included is we do weekly group coaching calls. So every Monday there's a group coaching call for the six weeks. 
you also get three one-on-one -on -one calls. So it's a group program and it's also, it's a combination of group and one-on-one. -on -one. It's the best of both worlds because we can really tailor what is happening with you and make sure that you have goals specific for you and not, you know, goals as, uh, as going ahead in a group. Um, every week there's a little bit of homework. So there's some extra videos that I've rec recorded and some extra inf extra info sheets. You also get an app, which is called Practice Better. And you would be, your the expectation would be that you would log in your food and your mood and your sleep and your activity for those six weeks because I am looking at it. So that's the only way that I can help you is that if you log those. And I know we don't have to log forever, but it's good to log once in a while just to see where we're at. It also links with your Fitbit and your Apple Watch. So if you're doing activities, um, it will link in with that and it'll pop up uh, automatically. And then there's weekly app check-ins on Fridays. So I will touch base with you on Friday and see how things are going and see if there's been any changes. Also on Friday, I am looking at all of your food logs. So um, there's eyes on you a lot for six weeks. So the success of this program for the women in this program is all of these touch points, right? Like for six weeks, we're meeting once a week on a group coaching call. We get three one-on-one -on -one calls. I'm checking in with you every Friday. It is a lot of touch points, but it will, it will um, help get these new habits in place and um, help you be, be successful. And it is a step that you can take towards your self-care. So week one, we look at nutrition and we do a hormone assessment. This hormone assessment talks about all the things we talked about today. Plus we go into adrenals, we go into your thyroid, we go into blood sugar balance, we go into digestive issues. So it's a really um, wide scope of what's going on with your body. And this is how we can kind of tailor this information specific for you. Um, week two, there is, we talk about movement and the importance of movement. And that's what we kind of touched on today. And then you also have access to a fitness library. Uh, and the fitness library are fitness videos that I've recorded. So I am a yoga instructor and I'm a Zumba instructor and um, a personal trainer. So I have I have knowledge in the field of exercise as well. So um, excuse me, you'll have access to a fitness library. And I would really like to work with you on developing um, a like a, an individual fitness program based on what you're currently doing and what you need to add and assign you like kind of like homework assign you the fitness videos to do. Um, week three, we talk about stress management and stress management techniques. Week four, we talk about physical body changes. Uh, week five, we talk about emotional and mental health changes. And week six, we chat about self care. So those are the group calls and what we talk about in those group calls. Um, our individual calls, we often will review what we did in the group calls, and then we will look at the hormone assessment and see, you know, the steps that we've made going forward if they're making some changes. So the cost of the program is $333. It's uh, $166.50 payment due upon registration, and then $166.50 uh, payment will be due on August 21st. And I'll just send an invoice. You can pay credit card or you can pay e-transfer or cash if you're close by. So I just wanted to share some of the outcomes of the women that, um, that I've worked with in this program. So the main, the main, usually the main goal is belly fat loss. And for every one, oh, I'm, I'm going to say 98% of the women I work with, we see uh, inches around the tummy loss. I think there's only been one or I think just one actually that um, we didn't see any change in inches around the tummy, um, but, and also some scale movement. So the goal is to have waist 35 inches or less around the belly button. That's what we're looking for. That's going to be the most important for your metabolic health. So, um, yeah, we, I see that with all of my clients, uh, fat loss around the belly, which is great. I see with almost all of my clients that they're getting a better night's sleep. So, um, this means that they are more energized in the morning, more able to take on the day, um, more energized throughout the day, and everything just really falls into place. And that is because we balance blood sugar. Balancing blood sugar uh, makes for a better night's sleep and also makes for less inches around that belly. Less stress symptoms. Um, so everyone is very unique in their stress symptoms. I think there's a list of like 15 that I have listed in the hormone assessment. 
Um, so I won't list all of them, but uh, all the time I see uh, less stress symptoms. And I think women are always shocked about where they started and everything that they had chick checked off that they were experiencing every single day and how they don't even have it anymore. Like headaches, like, oh, I get daily headaches at 3 p.m. And then you touch base with them two weeks later. How are your headaches? Oh, I, I haven't had a headache. All from, you know, balancing our blood sugar. Um, balancing our blood sugar lowers the amount of insulin our body is produced. Increased insulin increases our stress hormones. So again, it's about doing that work. You know, we have a loss of progesterone, which is going to increase our stress hormones that we have, that we have to deal with. But if we balance our blood sugar, we can bring down those stress hormones ourselves. And then confidence, because when they're done working with me, they have a plan that's worked for them. It is easy, it's adaptable, and they can take it where, anywhere with them. I'm not telling you, you, here's the recipe, you have to eat this recipe. I don't do that. I say, you need a protein, show me your protein. You need some vegetables, show me your vegetables. Give me, you know, show me your fruit, show me your fat. That's, that's what I'm doing. So it's very um, adaptable to anybody in any situation. You can eat with, your, what, with what your family is eating as well, which is nice. Um, and, and like I said, it gives them the confidence to just take that anywhere, anywhere with them. So if you want to work with me, let me know. Um, I'm here just for a few more days. I'm leaving next uh, Wednesday for vacation. Um, I will be in and out of my um, space of technology. Uh, you know, here and there throughout the day, but not on a lot. Uh, but if you have any questions, even if you wanted to get on a call and, um, you know, see what it's all about, if you need more information, I'd be happy to get on a phone call with you and chat about it as well to see if it's a good, a good fit for you. All right. So thanks everyone for watching. I'll put the link to join the program down below if you're interested and uh, have a good day. We'll chat later. Bye.